Hi, I'm Dr. V. I'm Chief of the Spine Pain Program at Bloor Pain Specialists, and today I'm going to be talking about MRI. Are central stenosis and foraminal stenosis the same? What's the difference? In short, no. But before answering that further, let's talk about stenosis itself. Stenosis is the medical word for narrowing or tightening. It can be used for any part of the body. If somebody has narrow blood vessels in their heart, it's coronary stenosis. And their carotid artery is going towards their brain. If it's in the spine, well, it depends on which part is narrow. In our spine, sure, all of our vertebrae are those rings of bone, and they create a cylinder where the center is a tube. If there's narrowness in the center of that tube, one little part of it is kinked and, and pinched, well, that center has central stenosis. And there's a few different reasons for that. I'll talk about that in a moment. But lateral means a little bit to the side. And so that means that the stenosis is not just in the center, it's off to the side. And oftentimes this is because of a disc protrusion or a one-sided disc bulge. And this means that the side of that central space is occupied and sometimes the nerves that are passing by there and exiting a level or two levels below are going to become symptomatic. If it's foraminal, well a foramen is a window. We have windows in our heart, we can have windows in different body types or body tissues I should say. And when we're coming to talking about the spine, the foramina or the foramen is a singular foramen is a window between two vertebrae a window on the left and a window on the right for one nerve to leave. One nerve to control a part of our left leg, another nerve to control a part of our right leg. They're a pair. The next level down, next pair of vertebrae, you have another set of windows. Then one after that, another set of windows. And that window can get smaller. The window frame can collapse in on itself. Well, how could that happen? Well, part of that window frame is a joint. A facet joint, and we talked about this in the previous video where facet joints can grow. They can have what's known as hypertrophy or growth, occupying space, it's a 3D joint. It just doesn't just grow outwards, it can grow inwards in towards the window. And as it gets more and more arthritic, it occupies more and more space. And that window can get smaller and smaller and smaller, occupying the space for that nerve to leave. This can result in discomfort, pain, and in some cases, dysfunction of a nerve loss of muscle tissue or atrophy as that nerve can no longer tell the muscles to do their job or just doesn't have the endurance to keep going. I mean, and some people become uh, symptomatic from their stenosis after a very short period of exercise. A few minutes of walking, a few minutes of standing, or a few minutes of relatively light activity. So they are inhibited from effectively maintaining their muscle strength in that region. And when it comes to foraminal stenosis, the treatment may be different. The treatment for the lateral recess stenosis and the foraminal stenosis is actually fairly similar in that oftentimes an epidural steroid is injected. But surgically, the treatment will differ in that a surgeon may resect some of the bone for the foramen to open up that window versus the lateral recess. They may get rid of the disc because they have different causes. In that lateral position, it's more likely the disc is causing the, the stenosis and therefore the disc gets a, the cut out or excised. And the foramen, although the disc can contribute, the bone is often a culprit as well. Should I be concerned if my MRI result mentions stenosis? What can I do to help symptoms? That's an excellent question. You know, knowing your own anatomy is extremely important and that is the important part. Concern is relating to your function. Having a diagnosis of stenosis alone without symptoms should not lead somebody to have concern. But they should remember, they should be aware of their, their baseline anatomy just in case they have a future injury or develop symptoms in the future so they have some reference point as to what might be causing their future symptoms. If somebody is symptomatic in a discomfort sort of state without any emergency sign, without any loss of function of their nerves, they don't have to be concerned in the urgent sense. But they should really be aware of their bodies, their, their anatomy, their MRI findings, because they do often get worse with time. So they'll need to engage in rehabilitative efforts to strengthen their backs, to stabilize their spines, so that 
they prevent additional wear and tear and worsening of that narrowed space that stenosis itself. So a lot of the rehab efforts will help slow down these processes and often pull people back from symptomatic to asymptomatic. That is the baseline therapy and it is effective for the vast majority. Outcomes are favor exercise more than just about any other therapy. Some medical management options exist, but their outcomes are rather poor, and we'll cover that in a different video on medical management of a back pain, another one on osteoarthritis, and a third one on medical management of neuropathic pain or nerve pain, which will result from stenosis. And medications tend not to do their job very well with a high likelihood of adverse effects. We can do procedures, do epidural steroid injections, if those are effective. They can re be repeated far down the line, but if not, we don't repeat something that doesn't make sense, that doesn't actually improve this patient's symptom. And while it improves one patient, it may not improve the next, and, and it might be wonderful for the third. And we can do use radiofrequency energy to either ablate small branches, to help somebody move a painful joint associated with the stenosis, or we can use radiofrequency energy to pulsate at the nerve roots so they're less sensitive of the impact of those surrounding structures pinching upon them. Those are options there, but surgery also remains an option. Thanks for watching today's video. Please like and subscribe below. If you have any questions that you'd like us to address in a future video, please leave them in the comments area. If you want us to answer any questions about your care specifically, please contact the clinic directly.